All right, well, welcome back to part two, or welcome to part two, however you want to put it, of my cheap rotisserie build made out of what I have lying around because material's really expensive and it's not worth spending $1,500 on a commercial one for what I need it for. So in the last video, built these frames for the front and the rear, and then I realized that this one was going to have to go the other way, so I went from being up here, I had to flip it upside down, I had to cut it, I had to make it fit, because I just didn't think about it in the first place, because I figure the pivot point's going to be lower than what I originally thought, so yeah, there we are, and I made these, and I didn't show you how I made these, so hopefully this video will be a lot shorter, um, but basically I'm going to explain what I did here, because last time I was just making them and there was no plan. It's the way these things go with me. So I'm going to show you how I did this and explain a little bit of why I did it. And if I'm really good, maybe I can try to do one of those voiceover things. I haven't figured out how to do that yet really well. So just bear with me. And I'll also explain what this is and how I intend to use it. Okay, well, here I've got my materials, materials in front of me. Now, essentially this is gonna be my vertical. Imagine this piece here is the horizontal that's already on the car. Now, what I've done is instead of doing a thread in the outside, because it takes more material, I went on the inside, which takes more work, which is not really that big a deal. So essentially, all I've done is taken, this is a jack shaft housing for a lawnmower. Now, you're going to imagine when you see the picture over there, you're going to say, oh, you're hanging off here that you're going to bolt this on here and use that. And no, I would not trust this aluminum casting to support the car. Would it do it? My, it, it, it would, as long as there's no shock loading, you'd be fine. But that's not how I'm going to mount it. What I'm going to do is actually mount it by here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to, again, I've talked about this before. Maybe wood, maybe metal. I'm not sure. Uh, the price of both is a fortune right now. You know, lumber went back up and metal is stupid expensive as well. So I'll kind of ignore this for the moment because we're not there yet, but we do need the nut off of it. Now, this threaded rod will go inside of here. So just imagine that's in there. Well, we've got to move that up and down. Okay, well, I'm going to use a coupling nut, which is a nice big long nut. This is going to go on that shaft. This is going to weld onto there. Okay, so this will all end up inside the tube. So you can imagine that this is going to be inside like that. So that's in there. So I cut out a notch in there for this bolt over here to go into. So once this is in place, this can move up and down. And then when you want to keep it in place, you don't have to rely on the threaded rod in the place at either end. You can actually tighten down this bolt through here, which will snug up and around on both sides of this and get nice and tight. So you've got the threaded rod holding the weight and you have this nut holding the weight as well. So you have double up and you know it's not gonna move. Now, this is not the ideal threaded rod to use for this. This is just plain old half inch, uh, quarter, quarter inch something coarse, I, mine can't remember right now. This would have been better as an Acme threaded rod, but uh, since Enco was bought out years ago, uh, we no longer have a affordable place to buy Acme rod and machine tools and bits and stuff like that. It just went really expensive when they got bought out. So this is what I'm using. Now, do not buy this in your um, hardware section at Home Depot. They will have sections, and they'll have that little display with all the vertical pieces of steel, which are, you know, five to ten times what it is anywhere else in price. So, at least on a threaded rod, you can go to the electrical section. You can buy these in ten-foot lengths. They're about, uh, depending on what size you get, this is half inch. I think it was about twelve bucks, give or take. Um, now, your nuts and bolts and hardware, don't buy these at Home Depot. Go to a farm store, go to um, Tractor Supply, something like that, that sells them by the pound. At Home Depot, this little nut right here is 30 cents. I'm paying two bucks a pound and I got a huge amount of hardware, stuff I didn't even need right now. 
It's way cheaper and it's the same stuff from the same factory. I think it was a dollar eighty nine a pound there. And if you want to, you can go up and grade a great by grade eight if you want. But for this, it doesn't really matter. It's a little bit more expensive, but not too bad. And this you can get in the electrical section, which you'll get a usually a coated one if they have it. But this, if you can't find that there, this will be in the section with that really expensive overpriced metal. So that's where you get that. Now, what I will do is when I come down to the end here, this will get double nutted, probably get a washer on the inside. I'll have a plate and this plate will have a hole in it to go through and then it'll all get stacked together and washered. On the other side, I actually welded a washer right on the top of that. So I had a welded on bearing surface and to stiffen it up a little bit more. You know, just a little extra. Um, I may actually use this pulley. Uh, once I get this thing all together, I may cut this, cut the rim off of here and use this somehow as a uh, positioner to lock it into position. We'll find out. You'll know as soon as I do. So uh, let me get over here and I'll show you marking this and where I'm going to cut this and how I ended up making it. Okay, well, here's my lower one end and that's my other end. I don't remember which is which at this point. Uh, I believe this is the bottom. So we'll just take and square that one off. Square that one off. And now I've already got this set up from last time so that this will give me a slot down the middle just a little bit bigger than that bolt so this is ready to go so I'll figure kind of go in I want to make this rounded end here and rounded here, so I just kind of guess at a point about here. You kind of ball. So, got that welded together, and I'm sitting it in like that against the bottom because I need to know the distance between here and the center here to uh, drill my plate. So, I'll do it the easy way. We just put it in there. space up this side so it's level first of all take my gloves off because I can't do anything gloves on all right so what I'll do while this is nice and hot take my little plate set that here all right well now we're at the point where I've got it roughly assembled you can see our nut assembly is inside I've got a plate at the bottom this is not permanent that's just there for the spacing at the moment so 
You can see, we turn it this way. It'll go that way. You turn it that way, go that way. You get the idea. So, now, what I'll do is go ahead and weld this cap piece on. We get that one welded on. And then we're going to take this one, and we're going to put it in the right orientation, and we're going to go over to the car, and the beam that's on the car where this is going to be sitting on top. We'll set this on top and drill the hole all the way through that beam because that threaded rod is going to go all the way through to the bottom. So uh, let me get this welded up. All right, well, this is put together for the moment. This is welded on the top. The washer's on there. Now imagine that this is the horizontal piece on the car and uh, on the front of this here. This nut's going to be obviously pointed up. It's just sitting here to make it easier. But essentially, this is all that's inside it. Got a threaded rod, these uh, coupling nut. Down here, we've got two nuts. will be tightened up, and then I'll tack weld them together. A washer on the inside. There's a washer welded to the outside. Another washer. Two more nuts. It'll get tightened up and, uh, and uh, welded together. And down here, on the bottom side of that beam, we'll get this plate welded to the bottom. And then we'll have the same kind of washers on the bottom of this as well. I'm not going to have the nuts on the inside. It's just not worth messing with for this. You know, you could do it uh, up in here if you wanted to. It's not worth it. It's all good. So uh, I'll uh, get this on the car and uh, you can see how it goes on the car. All right, well, I lost a lot of footage. My camera has not been uh, kind to me. Uh, it's Christmas Eve, and yeah, if you hear that noise, I got the 3D printer going over here, printing something, so yeah. But anyway, um, I did get it on here, and yeah, it uh, goes up and down. You get the idea goes up and down. Now I have not welded here and here on either side. I'm going to take uh, some of this uh, plate steel and I'm going to make a brace to go onto here and possibly onto this side. And I'm also going to take these little guys here and either bend the ends to a 45 and put it here on both sides uh, or I'll just tack it onto the back there. I'm not, I'm not sure which yet. I, I said Christmas Eve. I don't want to mess with it. Um, it'll just show up in the next video as being done. So the next video will be uh, building the legs and rolling the car over. And then I'll just do a really quick short video, uh, you know, kind of a over uh, oversight overhaul over, you know, overview. That's the word. Yeah, words are hard today. Yeah, I just do an overview of the whole thing. And uh, show it in action and I don't know maybe I'll take those wheelchair motors and put them up here and just you know make it spin and put a fire underneath it or something I, I don't know we'll see but uh, yeah as much as I want to mess with it I just want to get this done and out and it it's kind of choppy the camera was it would record when it wouldn't said it wasn't recording and when it wasn't recording it was recording uh, when I was using the remote thing it was totally backwards it kept disconnecting it was doing really weird things so uh, it's a GoPro they're buggy that's just what they are so but anyway hope everybody has a good Christmas um, I will get back to building the legs at some point in time I don't know we'll see but uh, well uh, see you on the next one and here's the uh, little 3d printer over here printing I'm just making a tiny little box with the uh, little shoot on the end so just a little sorting tray that you dump your hardware in from a bigger container so you have something to pour it back into it helps for small stuff so i just let that print let's see how it turns out it's great for handy little things like that and i made this a long time ago this is like a, a link chain this is all printed to go on the cable in the back and i still haven't gotten around to putting it on so i'll get that on a little bit